Howdy, partner. Found this TV on, um, what is it? Offer up. Free. Cool. This is such a cool looking TV. I had to see if it was RGB moddable. By the way, thanks that Chad. Found a service manual, and yup, it is RGB moddable. Cheese! Here's the part number for the chroma chip. And here's the service manual for the chroma chip. Bummer! The RGB lines are digital. Not so fast, my friend. I hope the chroma chip is set to analog. I've color-coded the RGB lines on the CAD drawings, and you can download them from the links in the description. This is a view from the underside of the board. Those dotted line arrows are jumpers and are in the perfect place. All right! Taking the cover off is the first step to fight your fear. You're watching the Sega-holic. Clip on that alligator clip and... Get ready! That wasn't that bad. This is just a run over of the various parts of the TV. These magnetic strips are used to correct the geometry of the TV. Yang this cable out to disable SVM. This is the source of all that voltage that makes you feel like a little girl. Screen a little blurry. Use the focus variable resistor on the flyback to adjust focus. Is your screen dark and the brightness maxed out in the menu? Try this VR. Before you start pulling off wires, just make sure to record how the wires were before. Hey Ma, look, it's an Orion! Like most of the flat screen Toshiba CRTs. Well, I hope I don't get shocked. Kidding, we already discharged it. It's easier to remove the anode by cupping the cap and pushing to one side. Everybody's favorite feature, scan velocity modulation. To disable, just leave the cable off. There's the root of all that evil. This tab holds the board in. Normally the ground lead is soldered on to the neck board. Cool. Carefully wiggle off the neck board. Try not to bump these magnetic rings.
Look at all the corrosion on the jumper wires. This TV must have spent some time in a home near the water. And by water, I mean the ocean. for the meat and potatoes. Find these jumpers on the board. Here's the area on the CAD drawing. You can see the top row of RGB and blanking lines lead to the chroma chip. While the bottom row of RGB and blanking lines lead to the microcontroller. Before we go ahead and cut the jumpers, let's clean off some of the corrosion. And instead of desoldering and removing the jumpers, let's go ahead and use them as headers. Watch. Invest in some new pond connectors to make your life easier. Look mom, no soldering. Remember the bottom row with the yellow blanking wire goes to the microcontroller and the upper row with the white blanking wire goes to the chroma chip. Extend these lines to a breadboard so you can test it. The RGB signals coming from the console needs a 75 ohm terminating resistor and also a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in series before going into the inputs of the chroma chip. The sync line only needs the 75 ohm terminating resistor. I built a female SCART adapter to break out the audio and video signals from the console. This is how you set it up on the breadboard. Those resistors are the 75 ohm terminating resistors for the RGB and sync lines. These batch of wires are the audio and ground lines. Black is ground. Connect that to the ground rail where the 75 ohm terminating resistors are also connected. White is audio left. And red is audio right. I'm just going to move this resistor closer to the other three. Now take the video wires and connect them to the resistors. Yellow is sync and it's a little bit away from the RGB lines. And then just connect the rest of the RGB lines. Again, these wires are coming from the console. Now connect the 0.1 microfarad capacitors to the RGB lines. 
Make sure you go over the ravine so you don't short off the leads. The RGB lines along with the yellow blanking wire leads to the microcontroller, so we'll put these on the side. The RGB lines with the white blanking wire leads to the chroma chip so just connect the corresponding color to the capacitor that's on the other side of the ravine just put the blanking wire off to the side I'll let you know the location for the 5 volts for this blanking pin later on. I built this breakout RCA jacks so you can just use RCA cables to connect to the TV's inputs. This one is for sink and ground. Connect this to the sink wire that's coming from the SCART connector. And if you see a lot of noise on the video, don't worry about it because the breadboard introduces a lot of noise. You can also use USB power for your 5 volts like I'm doing here. Alright! Easy peasy! The permanent audio left and right and sync and ground lines were soldered to the component uh, jacks on the rear of the TV. This is where you can source the 5 volts. You can source it at jumper W155. This location is also marked on the CAD drawing. Now that we confirmed everything would be working, we can get started making a dab nabbit harness. Here's the harness that's gonna be installed in the TV. I put the 75 ohm resistor for sync right at the SCART connector. I really should have put all the terminating 75 ohm resistors at the connector instead of on this perf board. Would have made life more easy peasy. The board sits on these three supports, so make sure to route the sink, ground, and audio wires away from the area.
Pressing the button toggles you between RGB mode and regular TV mode where it functions like how it did originally. And here's a look at what scan velocity modulation does to the picture. Notice how thin the white text has become.